Today's topic is how to be a successful real estate investor. My name is Mitch Steven and I've been investing in real estate for a long time. I've bought a, a house about every four to five days for over two decades. That's about a hundred houses a year and about 2,000 houses in my career. Now this is a huge topic and I'm sure you could get a million different answers and everybody's going to give you a different opinion about what it takes to be a successful real estate investor and rightfully so because it could go a million different directions. It depends on who you talk to. I'm just going to tell you what I think it takes or what helped me get through and if that helps you that's great. So let's go on. Early in my career I read a book called Self Made in America by John McCormick. It posed the question, why can immigrants come to this country, not know the language or the culture or even the laws, and become financially free within a relatively short period of time when us Americans who are born here, right on the corner of opportunity and success, can't make it in our entire life to financial freedom? I thought it was an interesting topic. I thought it was an interesting question, and I found the answers very interesting. That's where I learned to think like an immigrant because these people came over here with the right attitude and were able to take the tremendous infrastructure of this country and change their complete life. And they didn't even know the language when they got here. So number one, they recognized the opportunity of this country. A lot of these people would come from places where they slept on dirt floors. They were ruled by communism. They were threatened with death all the time. They were even possibly attempted extermination of their cultures. You know, these people had it tough. And when they got here and they had freedom and they could be whatever they wanted, they buckled down. To them, from what they had been through to what they could be, they could see it real close. We here in America, maybe we don't value that freedom as much as someone who comes from a different place. Number two, they were willing to sacrifice at way higher levels than we were willing to sacrifice. I remember the story of a Asian person who came over and they began working in the food court in the mall and then at night instead of going home to an apartment they didn't have an apartment they would get in the drawers and I mean in the cabinets and be real quiet until the whole mall would be locked up and then they would get out and they would eat the leftover coffee they would eat the leftover donuts they would clean up they would shower in the sink with towels and they would sleep on the floor and they would save every single penny until they bought that store I don't know a lot of Americans willing to sacrifice at that level. And even I wasn't willing to sacrifice at that level. But my eyes were opened to the fact that the reason why I wasn't being successful was I was not willing to sacrifice nearly to the level that it would take. And I made a resolve to sacrifice more and to live with less until I got there. And I learned that from that book. I actually started to think like an immigrant. So how does this relate to being a successful real estate investor? There has to be sacrifices to be successful at anything, whether you're a real estate investor or a car mechanic or a car salesman, it doesn't matter. To be the top of your field, to, to put away the money, to own your own shop, to buy what it is you need to be the boss and be the head of everything, it takes sacrifice. That's exactly what those people did when they slept on the floor. They sacrificed any luxuries today until they owned that store. They could write, they could pay for it cash. I don't think any of us are going to sleep on the floors and do what they did, but, but just know it takes sacrifice to get there. Number two, keep your overhead low because starting a business is usually a tenuous task at first. You don't start off making a million dollars. You don't start off making much at all. You got to keep your overhead low so when it's time to take a chance or time to do something, you're not threatened by the bills that are coming at the end of the month and you can go ahead and take some chances and do some things that you need to do. Uh, it takes a long time to get a business off the ground sometimes and you want to give yourself a fighting chance. Keeping your overhead low will help you. Also don't forget, you're going to have to roll some of the money you make back in. So if you have a big strike or get lucky early, don't go throw a big party and go buy a new boat. I mean just hang on to your money. You're going to have to roll some of it back in. Buy some things that you need. Pay off your office or pay off your office equipment. Do something but Use that money that you make to solidify your position in the industry that you're in. Use it to fortify what you've got going for you. Seek strategic alliances. That means when you see someone that's really good at something, try to 
find something that you can offer them that you're really good at and try to team up with them so that one plus one equals four. You know, he's really, really, really good at selling houses. I'm really, really, really good at finding houses and suck at selling houses. So what if I team up with this guy, go have a conversation with him, comes to find out He's not very good at finding houses. This might be a really good marriage. Seek strategic alliances where one plus one equals four. And this is a big one. Become the undisputed expert at one thing before you start going off into all different multiple tangents of this industry or opening up completely unrelated businesses. Become the undisputed champion, the expert of all experts in one thing. I chose to become an expert in seller financing. It was after that that I started doing uh, hard money lending and note servicing and educational products. But by the time I had started to think about any auxiliary business, I was a well-known expert for what I did in my region. I was a professional house buyer, owner financier. And I had done it hundreds and hundreds of times and I knew exactly how to do it. And then and only then did I move on to some other opportunities. When it comes time to move to those opportunities, make sure that the opportunities that you want to take on have some kind of tie to your core business. I'll use an example. If you own a lumber yard and your job is to take trees and to make them into boards, then you have a problem called sawdust and it's piling up every minute at your lumber yard. Now, you can pay to have it dumped or you can start a business that needs that sawdust as an integral part of the product you're fixing to make out of it. You could make ant poison out of it and put it in a bag by soaking it in poison and then bagging it and then putting a label and a logo on it and selling it. Or you could get some glue and you could glue it together and make press board. Or there's probably a hundred other things that I can't think of to do with sawdust. But the point is, is you've got sawdust mounting up. It's coming out of your exhaust pipe. So try to use the things that come out of your exhaust pipe of your core business to start your ancillary businesses with. And that way, everything kind of feeds each other. That this business will be a lot easier to get off the ground because you're getting the sawdust for free. So think about that when you start to think about adding another stream of income. I love multiple streams of income. Just don't try to do it too early because remember this, it'll take everything you've got for about two years to get any business off the ground. It'll take everything you have. That's a big mistake I made a long time ago. I thought we just start these businesses, they kind of run themselves or do that. They, they won't. It takes everything I have to start every business. And then after a year or two, I can start to pull away because I have management and it's running right. But I've tried businesses where I wasn't committed and it didn't work. So those are my hints and tips on how to be a successful real estate investor. For all practical reasons, it could be how to be any kind of successful business person. The tips kind of work all the way around. So if you like this conversation, please hit subscribe. We'd be happy for you to, us to follow us and see us in the next episodes. And help us out by hitting that like button. I really do need that help and it always helps us in our rankings when you hit that like button. Also, if you'd like a free copy of this book, My Life in a Thousand Houses, Failing for the Financial Freedom, I'll give it to you because I wrote it and I'm willing to give it to you. All you have to do is pay shipping and handling and I think that's like seven bucks. So to get this book, go to 1000houses.com, click on the free stuff tab, and then look for the offer for free book. And you'll see there, it's $7. You put it on your credit card or your PayPal, and we'll ship you out a book. If you order directly like that, it'll also come autographed. So I really appreciate y'all. Thanks for listening to us. I hope you're enjoying this channel, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye now.